Hi everyone and welcome to my tutorial on how to paint grimdark plagued rotted flesh. You'll be pleased to know that in this video I don't use any oils, enamels, airbrush or anything like that. We're just literally going to be using uh, paints and a uh, paintbrush. So going back to that, one of the main things is when we think of grimdark people think that you have to have like the oils and enamels and all that sort of good stuff and you really don't. And to me, Grimdark is it's like a style, and you know you don't always need that. You can achieve the same sort of style and look just by using normal acrylic paints, and uh, it's just like using like desaturated stuff. And again, going back to that sort of style, you know, there's that many different styles in uh, miniature painting that it just depends on what paints and stuff that you use. And hopefully, you'll be able to pick up something from this video that'll help you paint more in the Grimdark style without using oils or enamels. So with that said, let's get straight into the video. Also, if you could, it'd really help me out if you could just hit that like button. And if you're new to this channel, then please remember to subscribe. Just that one click, a small little thank you from you helps me grow massively as a channel. So first of all, I have primed the miniature. It's a new uh, primer that I picked up recently, which is the Pro Acryl Black Primer. Uh, I'm quite impressed with this. I do like mine more on the matte side, which this one is. It's not necessary that you have to, you know, prime them in a matte, but it is going to help on these first couple of layers because when you put like the first few layers on like a matte primer, it does tend to dull that paint down a little bit, which is going to help us uh, in, in, in this style, but it's not necessary, so don't think that. Uh, the first paint that we've used is Death Corpse Drab. This is a nice dull green paint and all we've got is a nice large brush and this is a size 2 and I'm just literally, I've thinned the paint 50-50, uh, paint to water and we're just going to work our way all around the mini uh, and just base coat every single bit, even going to like your little like pustules and like where the skin's broken and stuff, just literally get that paint in there and start to work your way around it. And once you've done that and it's dry, you'll have something that looks a little bit like this. Uh, now what we're going to do is, because we've thinned that paint, that's why it still looks a little bit dull. But what we are going to do now is go over with a second coat and we're going to start to map out sort of where our light volumes are going to be. So if you always struggle with like light volume, like where the light's coming in from, you know, you can sort of hold it under a lamp or take a picture and you can sort of see where that light's hitting and that's sort of where I place mine. Or, what I've done in this case, I sort of highlight the areas where we want our eyes to be drawn. So there's no point in literally spending ages and ages, you know, like doing like his fingers or his elbows and his arms and stuff, because people are not really going to look at that area. Your eyes are going to be drawn to areas on the miniature of interest such as it's like its head and especially with this miniature with it like all its guts and stuff hanging out uh th these are the areas that we're going to pay attention so like coming down towards his axe he might have a little bit going onto his shoulder and his head but really you know it's your light volume placement and the same going around to it on his back with this one i did it as though the lights also coming from above uh, but with this we're literally doing like a second coat just to map out where our highlights and stuff are going to be leaving that more desaturated first coat into the crevices and as, as we start to go up in the layers places like now where i'm painting underneath its stomach these are going to be in shadow so we're going to leave these more on the the, the, the green side and we're not going to spend a massive amount of attention onto those areas because in essence you know people are not really going to be looking at these areas and what it does it when you're painting and pay more attention to these light volume areas and areas of interest it sort of pulls your, your viewer's eyes to those areas. Next up, we're using Death World Forest, and we're going to use the same principle. We're going to thin this paint 50-50 with water, and this is sort of going to be like for our shadow highlights, so like areas like I spoke about here, they're like underneath the stomach and stuff. This is where this is sort of going to highlight and do them skin, and basically all we're doing is going back over what we've already done, mapping out those highlights, and just literally going in with this colour uh, and leaving some of that darker green that we've used before in the shadow areas. Now I want to talk a little bit about brush strokes and because we've got that thin paint, what's nice about doing it in this style is because it's like rotted fleshy, when you start building up these layers and layers, even with the same colour, so I could use this single colour and probably get about three different stages of highlights with this one colour. Um, because we've got those tiny, tiny little 
like marks and brush strokes in it and that's all we're doing it's like a scratchy style of painting if you ever watched some of richard gray's videos he's he does this quite a lot um and it builds up texture uh, on the skin which is going to massively play into like the rotted flesh style and you're just building up and going over them and over them uh, and as you start to build those layers up you've got loads of different marks on the skin that that do blend together it helps with the blending process and it also gives the the miniature a little bit of texture onto the skin so just work your way around again over those like highlight mapped areas and we're just building it up and building it up and leaving some into those crevice areas now we're introducing cadian flesh tone and the reason for this is we do want a little bit of you know so it, it's not just like green skin uh, so you don't want it to look like an orc but we're going to start and introduce uh, a more of like a realistic flesh tone into it and here i've mixed it 50 50 with a color that we've used before and again we're just working our way around introducing that standard um, like flesh tone color to each area and as you start going up in the layer so like before like i said you can get like three layers out of one color we're going to do a similar process with this, but with each layer that we go up, we're just going to introduce Cadian flesh tone with each layer that we add. So you might start off with, like at a minute it's 50-50 mix, then you might go to a 70% mix, 80% mix, until you're finally at, you know, 100% Cadian flesh tone. And what my idea with this is, is obviously for those highlight areas, we're going to, each layer that we go up, we're going to pay more attention to those highlight areas and just like nip it in a little bit more so it's just getting tighter and tighter and tighter uh, with each layer that we go up and you know there might be a gap on its belly where, where it's got like more shine and then as you come down you might put a little bit more cadian flesh tone there but basically paying attention to those highlight areas and just be getting you know lighter and lighter with each area but try not to go mad with this again you know it's all about drawing those eyes in those areas it's very tempting uh, and I did it whilst I was painting this miniature up is it's very tempting to like go on to his like underside where the shadow would be and start like highlighting that but trust me leave it and the end results will be 10 times better than you know like if you'd highlighted the entire area but obviously you don't want to leave too much green in some areas which is why we've got the 50 50 mix we sort of do want that you know realistic flesh tone even though it's got that more yellow side to it which is what we're trying to achieve with the plague flesh um, but trust me on this one just uh, try and keep those shadow areas and the beauty of it is if you do go over it or if you do want to add the shadows you can go back to your previous colors uh, and paint those shadows back in and finally the final color we're going to use is deep skin flesh now this is going to be our tightest highlight i do mix it 50 50 again with the cadian flesh tone to do like one sort of final highlight and then our main areas such as its stomach shoulder and the top of its head nowhere nowhere else really might put a little bit on the bicep just where that skin's really going to shine is i just use deep skin flesh on its own and i stipple this so i don't i don't use like the the brush strokes you can do that if you want it's not a problem but i tend to just stipple this on just to you know keep it tight and i'm not tempted to put like big massive brush brush strokes in and then that sort of completes it for the skin itself now all I do here is I've got Mahogany Brown, this is AK Mahogany Brown, and you don't have to use this colour, it's any sort of like reddish orangey brown, uh, like Mornfang Brown would be perfect for this, but we're just going to go around all the tears and the pustules, and we're just going to base coat each one of those areas in this colour. Staying away, don't do your intestines, we're going to do them a completely different colour a little bit later on in the video. But basically all these areas are the, the pustules and for like the mottled bits it's just fat on the skin. If you've ever seen like hospital documentaries and stuff this is like the fat that you can see when they like do operations and stuff. It's like a yellowy brown horrible colour uh, but we're going to come back to that a little bit later on. And then just to make the skin look a little bit more dead around like the areas where it's torn and where those plague bits are. We're going to use, and this is a bit where you can get creative, it's entirely up to you depending on how you want to do it, is we're just going to use a couple of inks like some washers. So the first one you use is Tag or Rag Shade and I go around all the spots and all like the little tears and just add a little bit into each around like the skin of each area of that uh, and then i think i used a little bit of caraberg crimson just to make it look a little bit sorer 
And then for areas like round his stomach where his intestines are, where it's really torn, like some of the bigger rips on his skin, I've just got Corvus Black and we've mixed it down to like a glaze consistency. We don't want it to be a wash, we want it to be a glaze. And just with a couple of layers, we're just going to apply that around some of the bigger tears. And what this does, it simulates as though that skin's really rotted and it's going to give it a little bit more contrast and something a little bit more exciting to look at. Now to highlight our fatty areas, I've got Fire Dragon Bright, and with each highlight that I go up, I just add a tiny little bit of Ice Yellow each time to work up those highlights. And again, this bit is it's up to you, the same with the washes and stuff, you can use different colours, try purples, try yellows, and if you want to get creative with it, that's entirely up to you, uh, and again, you'll get different looks still around that like rotted area, or attempted to even put a bit of blue in this, uh, but again, this bit is entirely up to you. And with each layer that we go up, we'll just add in ice yellow with each time to get brighter and brighter. The intestines are quite simple. I just used a base coat of Gal Vorback Red working up to Screamer Pink. And then I used AK Succubus Skin. Uh, and, and this, you don't have to use that exact colour. It can be... Uh, any sort of like pinky flesh tone uh, to highlight it with and then I added a tiny little bit of eyes yellow just for the final highlight and when you start working up towards those highlights don't just paint it um, across what you want to do is like use the downward strokes like these little lines uh, and that'll just give it a little bit of a different texture uh, and add to that intestine look now once you've completed all that one final thing you can add to each bit of the flesh is if you've got a bit of like uh, gloss varnish, you can add that to it, as you can see here. But what I've done, I've used my um, special technique that I use for wet effects, which is available to all members free. Uh, so just by becoming a member, you can get access to this recipe. Uh, and I've even like streaked it down as though like the skin um, is like dripped down and you get the wet effects and it just gives it that little bit more visual interest. Uh, but if you don't want to do that, you can use gloss varnish. And that pretty much concludes our uh, recipe for the skin. Uh, the armour was really simple. I gave it uh, an entire dry brush of lead belcher. And then I got Dirty Downs Rust, uh, the original and the yellow one. I put quite a bit of the yellow one in because I quite like how it goes and it matches like the, the, like the plaguey theme of it uh, and once all that has dried get some nice little chunks and stuff on there add a little bit of water uh, you'll have something that looks like this and then as a final little bit we just go back to our lead belcher and give the entire armor uh, another dry brush straight over your uh, dirty downs rust and, and this is just a nice quick easy rustic recipe and I think it really fits with this uh, like audible plague theme as well. he's not looked after his uh, tools um, but yeah, this is a really nice, easy, awful looking, rusty, uh, metallic metal colour. Uh, the rest of the uh, miniature were just painted up in like browns and mixing Mormfang brown with some like uh, uh, Obshanity bone and stuff like that to get like the bony areas. Uh, and the same for the cloth, just with like Mormfang brown working up to XV88. Uh, and that pretty much concludes our Plague King Marine thing. Not 100% what its, its actual name is, so forgive me for that. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, let me know in the comment section. If you've got any more questions, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. And again, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And most of all, hit that like button. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video without like, you know, like the usual Grimdark sort of stuff, let me know if you want to see more videos like this where I'm painting Grimdark without all the oils and enamels and stuff and uh, if you do we'll do some more tutorials uh, so until next time guys thanks for watching and i'll catch you in my next video